Total's Lagan Tormor development west of Shetland required the installation of the first major subsea infrastructure in these deep Atlantic waters and the building of a huge gas plant on Shetland. The discovery of the nearby Edredor and Glenlivet reservoirs highlighted the region's potential. However, the low oil price environment challenged the economic viability of developing these fields separately. With reservoirs smaller than Lagantor Moor, the development required fresh thinking in order to be viable. Not just in engineering, but in our commercial approach. Collaboration with Dong, now INEOS, and SSE spread the investment load, aligned our interests, and broadened our engineering expertise. Total is committed to provide energy to the UK, and especially gas, a clean, low carbon content energy. With Lag and Tormor, we were the proud pioneers of a gas subsea infrastructure connected to a large gas plant in Shetland. Edrado Glenlivet is a bright example of our performance mindset. It provides the opportunity to further develop the region despite safety and economical challenges. The Edredor Reservoir lies 35 kilometres east of Lagan Tormor, with Glenlivet a further 17 kilometres to the north. This would require over 35 kilometres of line pipe to connect the production flow lines to Lagan Tormor, and 56 kilometres of umbilicals to be laid in the harsh waters west of Shetland. Production fluids would then mix with existing Lagan Tormor fluids processed at the Shetland gas plant. Led by a dedicated project team in Aberdeen, development began in 2014, with Edredor First Gas targeted for late 2017 and Glenlivet in late 2018. Throughout front-end engineering and design, teams exploited the knowledge gained on Lag and Tormor by replicating designs, manufacturing and processes where possible. With our experience from Lag and Tormor, we had a far greater understanding of how to operate west of Shetland, dealing with the weather and subsea challenges. By embracing standardization, approximately 25% of the subsea design documentation was duplicated with significant time and cost savings. Working in this harsh environment was always going to present quality, safety and environmental challenges. But Total also had to manage multiple work sites and fabrication subcontractors in the UK and abroad. Such simultaneous operations offshore and onshore could only be performed with the cooperation of operations, drilling and all contractors. The project recognised that in a low-cost environment, robust management systems would need to be in place to ensure there was no compromise in QHSE standards. A commitment was made at the early stages of the project to create a legacy to be proud of, ensuring care for one another and safe delivery. The three-year drilling programme, developing Edredor as a single well and Glenlivet as two wells, was undertaken by the West Phoenix and Sedco 714. Drilling and completions had to overcome the area's deep water and unpredictable weather. However, with the West Phoenix having drilled the Lag and Tormor wells, there was a tremendous opportunity to learn from previous experience. Working with the same team uh, that was involved in the previous campaign for Lag and Tormor uh, allowed us to um, take advantage of the lesson learned because it was total personnel but also rate contractors. And linked to that, we were experiencing a market that was favorable for us to negotiate rate rates with the rate contractor. So at the end of the day, we come up with a saving of about 40% compared with the budget that was approved for the full project. While the drillers toiled offshore, fabrication of the SPS was underway in Norway. Two huge four-slot manifolds, each weighing 355 tonnes, were designed to rest on a foundation base structure that itself weighed 157 tonnes. All of the main components on Edward or Glenlivet are exactly the same as the Lag and Tormor ones. And also with carrying over the same engineering team, we were able to start detailed engineering on day one and we saved a significant amount of money in the documentation and the procedures for the project. 
By June 2016, the manifolds and subsea production structures were complete. Carefully loaded onto the BBC Amethyst, they then set sail for the Cromarty Firth in Scotland. At 40% of the project budget, the surface would be critical to the project's success. For example, fabricating a 37-kilometre-long umbilical and connecting it to Lag and Tormors would create one of the world's longest subsea control lines. With the current environment, we had to look at optimizing cost, especially on the surf package, which is one of the big package on the project. So we looked at how to optimize designs and also how to save money on onshore and offshore works. And we did that together with Technip FMC, obviously. Uh, and we achieved a lot of savings compared to our budget, more than 10% overall, which I think is a fantastic achievement for the project. The umbilicals were fabricated by Technip FMC umbilicals using their giant vertical helix assembly machine in Newcastle. Given the distances between the new and existing subsea infrastructure and the cost of repairing faults, reliability was a constant focus. In France, Valorec umbilicals used state-of-the-art lasers to seam weld the umbilical tubes. A first in the oil and gas industry, these thin superduplex tubes were stronger, lighter and more reliable than conventional tubes and more cost-effective. The line pipe was fabricated across multiple global locations and delivered to Evington Spool Base on the Cromarty Firth. Here the pipe was welded and coated in a smooth multi-phase process. Quality was critical with real-time radiography and automated ultrasonics, helping to ensure top quality welds and repair rates below 2%. Quality is paramount on these jobs, as they are on any subsea pipeline. Every weld's been inspected 100% by either automatic ultrasonic testing or digital radiography. In the summer of 2016, multiple work scopes had to be completed within a tight installation schedule. The Scandi Africa, mobilised from Newcastle, and during a 12-day period, successfully laid 54 kilometres of umbilicals, an industry record. The key to the success of this project has been the good cooperation between uh, Technip FMC and uh, Total. We have had a very constructive dialogue and a transparent relationship throughout the project, which has uh, contributed to make it successful. Meanwhile, the deep energy had also been busy, laying 87 kilometers of line pipe in three months. A huge achievement. The vessel then had to be re-engineered to spool and lay the six-inch meg and two-inch service lines piggyback style. We had to set up quite a number of new equipment on the vessel, test it and make sure it's working fine. And at the end of the day, we had very little surprise offshore. It worked relatively fine. And, uh, and I think it's a good achievement for the project based on the fact that it was something relatively new. By early July 2016, and aided by good weather, the manifolds and PLEM were successfully installed. The latest ROV technology helping to ensure the huge structures landed with pinpoint accuracy. Lasting 415 days, the 2016 offshore campaign was completed safely without a single LTI or any medical interventions. Offshore operations returned in the summer of 2017 with the installation of rigid well jumpers, flexible spools and pre-commissioning scopes in preparation for gas in late 2017. While an extensive rock dumping campaign used 800,000 tonnes of rock to protect the sensitive subsea infrastructure. One of the first things we've done on El Ardour compared to previous projects was to uh, put pipelines close to each other during installation. And the, the idea behind this was to optimize the overall quantity of rock. It did bring quite some challenges, but at the end of the day, it has been done very efficiently. And we did manage to, to reduce a lot the overall amount of rock we had to put uh, subsea, which is both a, a huge benefit in terms of cost, but also in terms of environment impact. After 1.4 million man-hours offshore, the installation phase was finally complete, on track to hit first gas in the third quarter of 2017. 
Communication and teamwork are essential to bring the pieces of the jigsaw together, allowing us to uh, mobilize equipment, personnel and the components that uh, eventually allowed us to uh, perform a successful installation campaign. The project's challenges were not confined to offshore. The hydrocarbons from Edredor and Glenlivet contain mercury which would have to be removed. This required a dedicated condensate mercury removal unit to be constructed and integrated into the Shetland gas plant. Not only the first brownfield construction, but work that would have to be undertaken on a live plant. Managed by Castain and built at Bifab and Fife, the CMRU was sailed up to Shetland in April 2017, but high winds delayed installation. With the clock ticking, installation finally took place at night. The key point is the preparation, because uh, wind can be violent, but uh, the team did uh, a very good uh, work uh, in terms of preparation and in terms of uh, execution, and they, they achieved a very safe uh, lifting. On the 24th of August 2017, and two months ahead of schedule, first gas from the Edredor well arrived at the Shetland gas plant. Glenlivet's wells were delivered on the 28th and 31st of August, over 13 months ahead of plan. With over 3 million man-hours and 768 offshore days, the Edredor Glenlivet project had not only been completed ahead of schedule, but almost 30% under budget. A massive achievement. Our success relied on the commitment of the teams involved and the lesson learned from Lagan Tormor, standardization and synergies. Equity alignment across the assets was also a critical factor, with all partners recognizing the importance of transparency, smart solution, and trust. I am proud to have worked on Edgedor Glenlivet. Everyone was empowered to take responsibility for safety and put forward their ideas to make their task or workplace safer. Integrating the Edgedor Glenlivet project into the West of Shetland asset at the start of 2017 helped accelerate our progress. This enabled close collaboration and great teamwork across all departments to deliver startup well ahead of schedule. Lagan Tormor and Edredor Glenlivet are now both delivering vital gas supplies to the UK. But this is only the beginning. The hydrocarbon potential west of Shetland is huge, and Total is keen to build new partnerships to exploit their subsea infrastructure's capacity. Delivering the project safely under budget and far ahead of the schedule is a major success. I'm very proud of the achievement and want to thank everyone in the project team, staff, contractors, service companies and joint venture partners. We now look forward to future tie-in. For Total, the West of Shetland story continues.